Hey everybody, Anxiety Offline back again today for a quick video. This actually might be kind of a longer video. In this one, we're gonna go over all of my miniature fingerboard accessories. So even before I was into fingerboarding, I've always really been into miniatures. I used to be super into Hot Wheels and Gundam, so I used to have a bunch of 164 scale and 1100 scale miniature objects. I used to buy a lot of stuff, I used to make a lot of stuff, and just have a lot of fun in general, just taking pictures of my miniatures and my Hot Wheels and my Gundams all together in these awesome little setups. I used to make hangers, like little uh, miniature hanger dioramas and miniature garage dioramas and all kinds of things like that. So, so when I got into fingerboarding and discovered all the really awesome 1 10th, 1 12th scale accessories they make, I was super excited. I started collecting a lot of stuff pretty much immediately. So a lot of the stuff I have I'm gonna show you today is kind of from when I first started and when I first got into fingerboarding, but other stuff I picked up along the way as well. Either way, miniatures are a great way to just kind of add some flavor to the background of your videos, or your pictures, or whatever. Even if you're doing product shots, the uh, miniatures in the background just help, just help things to look more realistic, just more cool, more appealing in general. So and it's awesome seeing things you're familiar with just scaled down into something super tiny. It's always super fun too. So let's jump into this video. It's going to be a longer one. Like I said, I'm going to go over all my miniatures, except my mini brands, no mini brands, just like fingerboard scale accessories, like shreddable accessories and things like that. So let's dive right into it. Uh, just a quick message from our sponsor. Hey everybody, it's Anxiety Offline popping in again. I just want to remind you, I have my own website, www.anxietyoffline.com, where I sell an array of fingerboard obstacles and supplies. If you want to get some really awesome custom concrete obstacles, definitely hit me up. I got a whole bunch of stuff available. More stuff dropping on Friday. I have some small stuff ready to go as well such as small items cases, plastic dumpsters, and target balls. So, like I said, check me out, anxietyoffline.com. Every purchase you make supports this channel and supports the website. It kind of helps keep the train moving, so I really appreciate all the support that you can provide. And that is really about it, so let's get back into the video. All right, y'all, I got a bunch of stuff to go through. We're gonna do it in no particular order. Uh, I didn't look up the prices of anything, really. I'm gonna kind of go by memory, but it should be a fun video. So let's get started with some of the stuff that I made. So here is my version one garbage can. I made this one a while ago. It's made from the candy, the plat, the, um, what's it called? Toxic waste candy. I got the barrel from there and then I painted it and weathered it, put some stickers on it. I made these labels for it. And then I went ahead and cut out like a plastic bag to kind of fit inside of there, secured that with a hair tie and now it kind of has like a realistic kind of garbage can or garbage bag in there as well. So pretty cool piece. You can put it you know, on its side or stand it up and do tricks over it. So this here is the version two one that I made. Same barrel from Toxic Waste, but I upgraded this one a little bit and I actually used some custom trash vinyls I made. I put that, put that on here. So it has like an actual kind of more realistic signage, I guess. This one's also weathered. And then this one actually has concrete poured inside of it. Again, it's fully weathered. I have like the dry brushing and a bunch of panel liner wash all over it. And then I also filled this one with concrete partially. So it's filled about a third with concrete. What that does, it gives it some more weight, makes it feel kind of more realistic. And then of course, if you want to stand it up, it helps it to stay more in place and that doesn't slide around as much. The version two definitely came out really cool. It's one a lot. And it's also one that I'll kind of just mess around with on my desk, just keep it there and do tricks over it or whatever. But anyway, Super cool piece. If you get your hands on a plastic waste barrel, it's definitely a fun little project to do. So this here isn't one that I made, but it's one that I do sell on my site. These are some green plastic dumpsters. They're actually made for like WWE, WWF figures, but they scale perfectly with fingerboarding. I've done a whole series of these that I've, that I've actually customized myself and done full weathering, full graffiti, full signage and everything. But this is how they kind of look out of the box. Minus the signs, I put these signs on here myself. These are ones I made with like a plastic backing and then tape over the front. So they, so they kind of have more of like a popped out 3D look. But um, this is how they come color wise. This is just a basic one. I think eventually I will weather this one and just kind of make it look like more realistic. But either way, it's an awesome desk piece. I like it the most because like it's functional and it's um, decorative. I usually just kind of have it tucked back here on my desk. But then I'll like, if I have trash that I need to throw away, I don't have the garbage can handy. I'll just pop it in there, no big deal. It's a trash can. And then of course you can sesh it too. I've made a video just like seshing this thing as an obstacle. So very functional, uh, very decorative, and just overall I think it's a really cool piece. I love having these 
on hand. It's a very, uh, they're fun. And these wheels actually, they function, they work, they spin, and they move, they're on casters so they can move all different kinds of ways. So yeah, it's pretty cool. This is like the real thing, it's scaled down and it's made out of plastic, not metal, but still pretty cool. This one here I did a whole video about a while back. You might remember it if you've been subscribed to this channel for a while. This is a 1 scale RC truck barrier. Uh, it's from a company in China. I got it off eBay. It actually comes in a kit. You have to build it yourself. I had to go track down some, some, some special screwdrivers and hex drivers to actually get this thing together and get it solid. And you can watch the full video about it if you want. I, I like it. It's, it looks very cool. Not one I'd recommend to everybody just based on the difficulty to kind of to put it together. And it's not very big either. When you, when you want to sesh it, it's just, it's a little bit cramped, but it is full metal. It's a very realistic feeling and sounding. And this one again is one you can sesh or you just kind of have it in the background chilling. It just kind of looks cool to have there. So uh, I wanted to mention this one as well. All right, next up is Future Bound Prints. And this is actually a company where my homie Ryan, I met him at Boards and Brews and we become very quick friends. So we do a lot of trades, especially when we see each other at different events and things like that. So I have a couple pieces here from his company that I want to mention. And they sell a wide variety of stuff. So definitely check out their website. You can find them on Etsy and they're called Future Bound Prints. They sell all kinds of stuff from decks to bushings to mailboxes, traffic cones, barriers, ice machines, ice boxes, all kinds of really cool stuff. You can jazz up uh, any diorama with stuff they have. I definitely recommend checking them out. If you want to build your own diorama or build any kind of fingerboard park, you definitely should grab some of their stuff. It just makes things look so much more realistic and just adds such an awesome touch. So yeah, let's look at a couple pieces that I got here. The first one's going to be the trash can. So this is, uh, I think version one, version two. They're pretty similar. I actually ended up gluing the version one which is I, did, I was in two pieces and I was tired of like losing it all the time, but I'm pretty sure they all come glued like this now. I did the graffiti on there myself, but it comes with a little recycle vinyl on there. And then this one is a trash vinyl. So it's kind of cool, look at the trash and they're cycling. Both kind of one, you know, both ones you would see out at the, store or wherever and uh, they're super cool they add a lot of flavor in the background you can actually use them if you want to you can actually put trash in there and the best thing about these things is that you can actually sesh them i'll put it on its side kind of just like that and you can see a bunch of grind marks there i access this thing all the time it's a very fun very compact obstacle kind of challenging very techy but but if you put your mind to it you can definitely sesh it so these are 3D printed plastic. They're 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 light, but they're very heavy duty. I wouldn't go and like crush it, but it can definitely stand up to like some pressure and you can sesh it no problem. So definitely check these out. These run about $16 as of right now. They're totally worth it. They come painted with the vinyl and everything. So future broad prints, definitely check them out. Next up, I got the mailbox. This is probably one of my favorite pieces by them. I don't sesh it as much, but it's just so realistic looking. Um, it's, again, it's 3D printed, but they did a nice job with the legs here. Very like, very uh, realistic proportions. Looks just like a real one you would see out in real life. I have one down the street from me, it looks just like this. Even down to the little hours thing on the, uh, on the box here. But super cool, it's got the labels on here, so it's all labeled up, looks very legit. And then it's painted in that classic, you know, USPS navy blue color. So. It's even got the handle on there. You can't pull it out, obviously, but just the realism on here is very, very nice. I like this one a lot. I've always been a fan of the USPS branding and just everything USPS related, so very cool to get this one. And I got a little miniature USPS sticker on the back there from Leanne K over at Sticky Goodness, so check them out as well. But yeah, that's the Future Bound Prince mailbox, one of my favorite pieces. I think eventually I want to weather this one, give it some nice dry brushing, a nice enamel wash, it would look very cool with some weathering on there. So that is the Future Bound Prince mailbox. All right, last up from Future Bound Prince is going to be their fire hydrant. This thing is super cool, very realistic looking again. This one, um, I weathered into the graffiti myself, but it came painted yellow with these really cool chains on here. It's about three inches tall or so. It's a, it's a really fun obstacle to kind of put stationary and then try to do some knot toss spins on it or just kind of, you know, tricks over it or whatever. Uh, I love the chains. Again, very realistic, small touch, but just adds a lot of character to it. Got an RD tag on the side there because, you know, RD loves fire, fire hydrants. And uh, yeah, very fun piece. The weathering on here was super easy to do. If you want to practice weathering or enamel washing, 
definitely grab something like this because it has all these contour lines and all these little cre crevices you can kind of put the weathering, put the enamel wash kind of into. So um, yeah, super fun piece. Uh, very, very functional and again, decorative as well. So if you're building a street diorama or anything like that, you should definitely grab one of these. Fun to sash, fun to look at and highly recommend them. So this is the Future Bound Prince Fire Hydrant. Future Bound Prince also sells the 50 millimeter 3D printed deck, a very popular novelty deck. Like I said, it's 50 millimeters, super thick. It's pretty much a potato chip, but if you want something different, new, challenging to kind of check out, check out that deck. It's very, very fun. All right, next up we're gonna talk about Launch Labs. And Launch Labs is a company that was around when I first got into fingerboarding, but unfortunately they haven't posted in quite a long time. Their last, their last Instagram post is from a year ago and the website is down right now. So I'm really not sure where he is. Wherever he is though, I wish him well. Hope he's doing good wherever he's at. Uh, I love his products and his company. He always does really cool stuff. So um, wherever you are, I wish you well. But these are two products of his that I really, really liked. And the first one is the Fire Hydrant. And this one's really cool. It's a more simple fire hydrant than than this one in the in just in its in its, in its, in its actual looks. It's almost kind of cartoony looking in a way. But the cool thing is, is it actually opens up and you can store stuff in there. So you can put a tool, some wheels, bushings, whatever you want. It's got a big enough area in there where you can put some stuff and then you can obviously, it threads, you can lock it up nice. It's not gonna open up on you, at least it shouldn't. And then you can put it in your bag, your pocket, wherever. Uh, take it kind of on the go so it's kind of a cool piece to kind of take you know out to outdoor spots or whatever because you can store stuff in there and you can sesh it so it's got kind of double functionality and uh, all that good stuff so that's the launch labs fire hydrant and again i just liked how in ingenious this company was they're just always doing just cool new stuff that felt really unique to the brand and uh this is a small thing right here but it's definitely it's definitely a very cool thing i feel like this isn't a miniature, but I wanted to include it since we're talking about Launch Labs. This was Launch Labs kind of like leading product, one of their, I think their best selling product. A lot, this is a product a lot of companies that I've seen copy in the past year or so, but um, that's just how the, how the game goes. But I think, I still think this is the best iteration of this idea. And what this is, is a 3D printed fingerboard storage case. I got mine decked out in a bunch of stickers here but it came with a blue top and kind of a black case here. It's got these really heavy duty magnets. They're very heavy duty. No dust is gonna get in there. You can't even see through there really. So just super high quality. Uh, I've seen a lot of companies do things similar, but this one is just my favorite. It's very, very low profile, but very, very strong. I mean, you could take this thing and try to crush it. It's not going anywhere. For being 3D printed, it just has, I mean, you can tell it's 3D printed, but at the same time, it feels like a very, very nice, high-end manufactured product. And I definitely trust my fingerboard when I put it in here. No worries at all. The only thing I would change is sometimes it doesn't always fit fingerboards with super high kicks comfortably. So that one's in there okay, but I had one deck that I would put the top on and it would kind of stick up a millimeter or so on one side. So I wasn't afraid to put my deck in there. I wanted to get crushed, but for the most part, most decks fit in here perfectly. If you can find one, I highly recommend them. I think they were about 30 bucks or so when they were out. But um, anyway, just want to cover that one real quick. It's one that I do use a lot, even though it's not really a miniature, it's still part of Launch Lab. So I just want to kind of include it in there and talk about it. Because if you've ever met me, you've probably seen this thing I'm in my pocket or in my bag or wherever. I've taken this thing to pretty much every meetup I've been to. And uh, it's just a cool little piece. So that is the Launch Labs case and the Launch Labs fire hydrant. All right, so real quick, we're talking about Only New York. And they are the ones who made this here. And what this is, is a steel mesh garbage can, like you would see in New York, pretty much on, like, on the island of Manhattan or any of the five boroughs you'll see these kind of like on every street corner or kind of close to it. They'll usually be totally filled with trash where you can't even like put anything in there. You usually kind of have to put it very on top of the pile. But this is one scaled down. It's scaled down more to this, like more of like a cup size than it is actually scaled to like a skateboard, but they're very, very close. I think if you were to take a skateboard up to one of these trash cans, I mean, it would, it would pretty, it would be very similar. So. Even though it's not totally made for fingerboard scale, it fits perfectly. And this thing is metal too, it's solid metal. So even though it's kind of a smaller piece, it's got some nice kind of weight to it. 
And if you were to grind it enough, it is powder coated, I believe. So if you were to grind it enough, you'd probably get some of the metal showing through there. It probably would look pretty cool. But it does have the only NY branding on the bottom. And then around the top, it has this very like long sticker that kind of wraps around here and mimics the real life um, New York City garbage can. It just kind of says, keep New York City clean. And then it has kind of a, uh, uh, you know, the official New York seal on there and then something about what not to throw in there, I guess. But uh, very realistic, just like in real life. This is like the exact thing scaled down. So this was pretty expensive. This was like 55 bucks uh, without shipping, I believe. So not one I would really recommend to everybody. But if you're into scale miniatures and stuff like that, or you just want a cool desk piece, I keep a lot of my pens and pencils in here and kind of just keep it on my desk. Every once in a while, I'll pull everything out of it, you know, sesh it, do something with it, put it in the video, whatever. But but yeah, it's a cool piece to kind of keep on the desk and just a cool thing to look at. Again, it's functional, but also decorative. So it's kind of a cool thing when it comes to miniatures. And on the same topic of New York, let's talk about Blue Bodega. So I made a whole video on this one. This is the Blue Bodega Yo Scam Barrier. And just like you'll see these all around New York, you'll see these two. And what this is is a water barrier. So it's a, in real life, it's a plastic traffic barrier that they take around wherever and when they put it in its place, they fill it up with water. So that it becomes really, really heavy and it cannot move. They'll use them to block off construction sites or you know whatever, you'll see them all over the place. And they're really popular with graffiti artists. They'll write on them a lot. They're usually covered in tags and things like that. So with these, uh, the artist scam came together with Blue Bodega and they made these really cool uh, scaled down water barriers. So this one's made completely from resin. It doesn't actually fill up with water. It's just a solid resin piece. It's painted orange. And then Scam was nice enough to do a handwritten tag on there as well. That's actually Scam's like real life, you know, he hand wrote that on there. That's pretty cool. And then um, Blue Bodega did a nice job with these kind of decals on here. And with some on top too, to kind of mimic those uh, caps you kind of put the water into. Sorry, I keep looking over there, not over there. I'm gonna make sure I have y'all in frame. But um, it's a very cool piece. I put some stoppers on the bottom, and even though it's so tall, it still functions really well as a finger war obstacle. Doesn't want to tip too often, and it's very, very smooth. If you can kind of get on here and, and, and get a grind going, you'll have no problem doing a trick off of there or getting off the dig or whatever. The only really, really real obstacle is this piece here. You can get kind of caught up in there sometimes, or this piece here, but uh, no shade on them. It's not meant to be a finger war obstacle. It's just meant to be kind of a scale piece. But yeah, overall, it's a really cool piece. If you want to find out more, check out my full video where I kind of talk a little bit more about it. I think they ran about 50 bucks or 55 bucks or so. They came in two different colors, orange and white. I got the orange one because it kind of looked more realistic or whatever, but the white one's pretty cool too if you want to do some, you know, crazy artwork on the back or wherever. But either way, it's a cool piece. Go support Blue Bodega. They're a really awesome brand. They make all kinds of um, graffiti related accessories and just really cool stuff. So check them out. They're a graffiti brand owned by graffiti writers. So if you want to support like a real graffiti brand, definitely check out Blue Bodega because they're super, super dope. So that is the Blue Bodega Yo Scam Barrier. And then lastly, I want to mention this little plant here. I got it at Ikea. It was like five bucks, I think. I don't know, probably now five bucks with inflation. But again, it's just a cool piece to kind of have in the background, just put wherever. It's nice to kind of have plants in the back of your fingerboard video to kind of add some some freshness or whatever. So that's the Ikea plant right there. And that brings us to the end of this video. So we have talked about a lot of miniatures. Definitely check out these brands. They're all run by really awesome people who are doing great things. So we got Only NYC, Blue Bodega, Future Bound Prints, and Launch Labs. Definitely check them out and support them. And if you wanna find more cool stuff like this, all you gotta do is go over to Google or Amazon and punch in 110 scale or 112 scale RC accessories. You'll find a whole array of stuff that should scale in pretty well with fingerboarding. You can use it for your dioramas, your background, you know, video backgrounds or whatever. So if you wanna find more stuff like that, just search for 110 scale or 112 scale RC accessories. And don't forget, I have my own website, anxietyoffline.com, where I sell an array of fingerboard obstacles and supplies. If you made it this far in the video, go in the comment section and comment the word MINI in all caps so I know you watched the whole thing. I got a ton more content coming your way, so stay tuned. So drink some water, eat a salad, and keep shredding, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.